tonight's sermon is, I believe, a very critical, pivotal one. Because every one of us most likely have been in a car, used GPS, and all of a sudden it reroutes because we missed our turn or we weren't really paying attention or there might have been a traffic jam, an accident, or for some reason something happened. It required what I'm going to talk about, a reroute. You might feel right now that you're in the midst of a reroute. But I want you to understand that as I speak this word tonight, your reroute is on its way to promotions. Many times in life and ministry, I've had to reroute, I've had to reposition, I've had to transition from one thing to another. And every time, let me say this, every time it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been the greatest transitions. It hasn't been the greatest reroutes. It's frustrating. It's the unknown. When you're turning around, you don't know what you're turning around to get to. You don't know until you drive down to that destination. And God does this out of nowhere sometimes. It's not like he tries to tell you long before it happens, I'm going to reroute you. No. See, God wanted to show me exactly what he was talking about. When he reroutes you, that means he's really wanting to get you to understand something. See, if you really listen to what God is saying, there will, there were also several things not producing fruit during that. So if you're in the midst of like you're the end of this and you're the end of that road and you've reached the end of that road, and you know if you're hitting the ends of roads, it's time for something new. And each of us must be willing to rewrite different things in our lives to get into alignment to what God has for us. <coughs> See, in order to do this, we must learn. We must hear. We must hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. This word reroute was that he wants to have the same kind of access and freedom in every area of your life. And right now, it doesn't matter what it looks like, our nation is going through a transition. One of the biggest, I know, I, I'm the biggest transition in my lifetime. But I know that they're probably one of the biggest, one of the biggest in the entire beginning of the United States of America. But just as we leave room or space to allow the Holy Spirit to do whatever he wants to do, many of us say this all the time, God, do whatever you're going to do. But then when he begins to try to do it, we're like, oh, hold the phone. We don't want to do this. We should invite him to do what he wants to do in our families, in our relationships, in our business, in our adventures, ministry opportunities, whatever we do, everywhere we go, and everything we do. So what is the first step? We have to make adjustments. When, when GPS tells you to reroute, first thing you've got to do usually is flip on your turn signal because you're going to be turning around. Or 
you're going to be taking a longer road to get where you're going. Being led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, can sometimes mean making simple or small adjustments to redirect or reroute us to move forward into God's plan for us. Just as a chiropractor makes adjustments, those little adjustments sometimes will just change everything. It reroutes and aligns your body back to where it was. So sometimes we can get off track. Sometimes the enemy can get us off track. And sometimes we're just a little off path for other reasons. But the whole thing comes back to God can make a couple of little adjustments and get us right back on path. Then you're in perfect alignment with the Lord. You're going to see the kingdom invade absolutely everything you do. I went through a season recently that was just one of the greatest seasons. It seems like everything I was doing was working. I did exactly what God said to do every day, every day, every day, and my hands were blessed. And right now, I could use another season. And I'm telling you, we're stepping into it. As what I'm seeing right now, there is an alignment coming. There is a reassignment coming. There's a reroute coming that's going to get you to the promotions that are coming. I believe the Lord is leading his remnant. <coughs> his remnant in the body of Christ to do great exploits for him in the south. I believe the greatest days for the church are ahead. And this is supposed to be the greatest time to be alive. And we're about to see major breakthrough. The kingdom turn around for America. And just step into our kingdom assignment as part of what God is about to do. We must be willing to take the reroute, redirection, repositioning the Holy Spirit asks of us. In this hour, God is looking for those who will listen for and obey his instructions. If we want to see powerful move of God, and we all can say within ourselves, Oh, I would love to see a powerful move of God, especially right now. And I know it's coming. And if we want to be a part of it, we must reroute. We're not going to get there from where we're at. We're going to have to get there from a new route, a new road, a new avenue. Listen to this. The promotion is here. This was all a time of transition. For the last couple of years, today is October 6, 2021, and for the last couple of years, we have been through a nationwide transition. We might even say a worldwide transition, whether we can make a choice for the better of life or for the worst of life. But trans transition can be hard, especially when your identity is wrong. A lot of people right now don't know who they are, especially young people. And they're supposed to be seeing the greatest move of God that we've ever seen. And they don't know who they are. They don't know what they are. They don't know where they are from. They don't know what identity they have. But this reaction to transition is normal for us to be freaking out. Many heroes of faith experienced the same point. Even after they had seen great signs and wonders. See, I've seen miracles, signs and wonders. I've prophesied the word of the Lord. I've been in ministry for 
over 30 years. And here we are today. I'm in another transition. My God, I'm in another transition. Oh, Lord, are you serious? There's a man named Gideon. Judges chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Found himself in a situation much like this. There came an angel unto the Lord that sat under the oak, which was in Ophel, and that pertaineth unto Johab, the Abizrael. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee. Thou mighty man of valor. Powerful. That's a powerful word. The Lord sent an angel to Gideon, even though his identity at the moment was not of power and might. He had no power, he had no might in his identity, but God saw power and might in his identity. Gideon was feeling depressed. The Israelites were under oppression. Then God came. Come on. Right now you might be feeling depressed. You might be feeling like you're under oppression. And it's time for God to come. And he's coming. Even though Gideon was questioning the Lord after all the amazing things he had done. Here was an angel sitting under a tree. See, um, God has love and mercy. He sends messages through an angel like this to call Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. See, God gave him a new identity. He called him something that he was not yet. Maybe you feel a little oppressed today. And if you're watching the news, I understand. You're questioning the trials and testings. You're asking the Lord, where are the miracles? Where's revival? What's going on? Why are all the churches going nowhere? Be encouraged. God is going to build a new foundation for you. See, when God came to Gideon, he specifically spoke about how Gideon's identity had to change. He had to stop identifying with loss, tragedy, oppression, and began to see himself as a mighty man of valor. And he was called to be. And if he was going to come out in victory, he was going to have to renew his mind and thoughts to align with God's declaration. The same is true for you. Now is the time for change. I said it again. Now is the time for change. If you're going through transition into God's strategies and promotion, you have to start with yourself and see how God sees you. You may look in the mirror and not see what God sees. But see, God sees you as something else. See, your identity is in Him and Him alone. you got to start seeing things as God sees them. He is building you right now for greater glory. Remember when the angel called Gideon a mighty man of valor. The word valor in Hebrew meant the glory of the Lord, the wealth and resources of God. So basically the angel was saying to Gideon, mighty man of valor, a man of great resources that carries the glory of God. Great resources means God supplying everything. 
and the glory presence of God. That's a mighty man of valor. If you're feeling like you're not carrying the glory in the Lord right now, you have to do, all you have to do is allow your identity to begin to shift and transition to this promotion time. You have to reroute to this promotion time. You're going to carry more glory when you find yourself in Him. Your new identity is in Christ as a person of valor in Him. It's time to get ready. It's time to be ready. God's already promised our nation is going to be okay. God's already promised restoration and things are going to break through. A lot of things are going to happen and we give God all the glory for that. The timing is the hardest part of it. But in the midst of it, why do we have to wait for us to rise up as mighty men of valor? Mighty women of valor. Even mighty children of valor. Because God's coming back for a glorious church. Without spot. Without recall. Now, are you going to be part of that? Come on. God bless you.